Hello and welcome everyone to this webinar hosted by Teradex. Uh, get your ideas of the drawing board with Node Red. My name is Gustavo Leal and I am a field application engineer at Teradex. Uh, before diving into the webinar, let me cover a few organizational points. Uh, please use the chat window of the webinar too if you have any technical issues and you wish to, to let us know. Uh, at the end, we will we'll do an interactive Q&A session. You can type your questions in the chat window anytime. We will pick them up at the end. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and made available for on-demand viewing later. So let's get started. We'll begin with a very brief overview about Teradex and what it is that we do. Uh, Teradex is focusing on making embedded computing easy to use so you can get simple access to the latest technology for your product development. Uh, we are doing this by providing the highly reliable ARM system modules, including software and support. Uh, we strive to offer uh, the lowest cost of ownership to you, and this means not just the module price, as we also consider things like your development effort, time to market, and long-term maintenance. We're proud of being able to have industry-leading support, uh, including a very active community, a developer page with over 800 articles with daily updates. Uh, and as you can see in the, the map, we have offices all around the world uh, with local support and, and local warehouses. Here is a short uh, overview of our products. We have three some families inside these families the modules are all pin compatible so you can seamlessly scale from uh, for example the imx6 to the imx8 or scale down to uh, from the imx6 to the imx6 ull for example i'd also like to explain our focus applications as we are optimizing our products and offerings for those so our top markets are industrial automation, uh, healthcare, medical devices, uh, transportation, test measurements, and smart cities. Typical projects are customers with a volume requirements of a few hundreds to a few ten thousands of products per year. Uh, Teradex itself has uh, thousands of active customers nowadays. Uh, apart from the, the system of modules, uh, Teradex also provides production-ready software, including reference images uh, for Yocto project. We are also active in mainlining code, uh, contributing uh, to the Linux kernel, U-Boot, and other open source projects. So, gonna tell you a bit about Horizon, which is a brand new free offering from Teradex. It is an open source and easy to use industrial Linux software platform. Our focus with Horizon is to lower your time to market and it can be used out of the box. It is based on open software, so you have no lock in and you can adjust it to your needs. Terizon also comes with an automotive grade update client to allow for simple, safe, and secure remote software updates. As an example, software updates uh, with Terizon are safe even if you lose power uh, in the middle of an update, for example. Security is another focus. Uh, we have frequent updates and simple access to hardware security features that makes it easy for you to to develop a secure device. We have modern continuous integration and verification processes uh, to make sure that every Terizon release is stable. Uh, we built Terizon with uh, the Yocto project and we're using Docker for software continuization. So you, we, we are tapping in a vast software ecosystem. Uh, so I'm gonna start with Terizon, as I said, we have Terizon Core, that is our distro, and it is actually a binary distro. It is it's very minimal, and every application you run uh, will run as a a container. So I'm gonna show you uh, how easy it is to get something up and running and do some quick prototyping. So. Uh, Today, I'm going to show you uh, how to use Node-RED on Terizon. So Node-RED is a programming tool uh, based on visual flow, so you don't need uh, to 
necessarily write code on this. It's very easy to use, very intuitive. So uh, according to Node's Red's own documentation, uh, you can just use their their official container images to to launch and get something running. Their documentation states that this this simple command will just uh, launch an instance of Node Red. Since we're going to have some hardware access here, because I'll, uh, I'll be reading data from a sensor, I'm using this Docker Compose file, which is used to launch a container uh, via an YML file. So it's easier to read, it's easier to configure. So I'm just pulling in a Node Red's image. I'm naming the container. I'm just attaching. Uh, this directory from my base OS to this uh, directory inside the container. So all data I use, uh, my flows, my plugins are all saved when I exit the container. Here I'm attaching my I2C device. Today I'll be reading data from an IMU. Uh, I'll be reading accelerometer, gyroscope, uh, and etc. And I'm attaching this to I squared C1 inside of the container. I'll explain that why I, I did that later. And I'm and I'm sharing this port uh, because that's the port where the uh, I'm going to access uh, Node Red's editor from my browser. So to to use it. So uh, let's get started. I'm go I'm going to access the editor. Okay. So. Uh, here I have my, my device. I'm using a Calibri iMac 7, one gigabyte of RAM uh, with the Ryzen. So uh, here it is like I just installed to Ryzen and, and created this, these directories and that, that Docker Compose file. So uh, I didn't have to install anything. So I've just run Docker Compose up and then uh, it will read from that YML file. It will give me some some verbose output. Okay, uh, let me just explain my setup. I'm using a, a an IMU just like this. I connected the the just the two I squared C uh, lines and the power supply. So the, this four pins to the Aster carrier board I'm using here with the Colibri IMX7. So just four wires to the board and my, my setup is simple as that. I'm connected to ethernet, uh, so it's on my local network. Okay, so it's, it's, it's so now I can just reload this and we're done. Uh, okay, so this is what we are trying to do today. It's, it's a simple flow that will read from the sensor and output this to the cloud. Okay, so let's start this from scratch. I'm going just to delete this and deploy, so make sure nothing is running yet. So, uh, what is is cool about Node Red is that we we have a lot of uh, a lot of modules that are ready to use. We can just uh, besides what they already offer here, uh, we can download modules that the community makes and for example this sensor i'm using is it's the mpu 9250 so i just i went to the menu and manage palettes and then install i just searched here for mpu 92 i noticed that someone uh, already did uh, something here to to read from this sensor i just installed it you just click install it will install i, just, I already did it to to save some time and it will show up here. So there's the single block uh, that it's meant to, to read this sensor. Uh, so I just went over to the documentation for this module and there's instructions here. I don't need to do this first this first step for Horizon. It's all ready. And it says, uh, I have to send uh, a JSON payload to this node. Uh, and it will start streaming data, uh, red in JSON format. So let me show you. With no red, uh, you have to start your flow somewhere. So usually you're going to start with an inject node. Inject node will just send some initial data to 
you know, it consists of whatever you like. You can send a string, a number, a JSON payload, a timestamp. So according to the documentation, I'll send some, some JSON data. So I get this example from the documentation and we'll start, it will start uh, sending all data available from the IMU. Okay, done. And I'll just connect this to my sensor node. This particular node has no configurations. Usually you would have some configuration here, but that's not the case in this, in this particular example. So, perfect. Uh, I, I wanna see if my data is coming up uh, nicely. So I just add this debug node. What it does is it outputs everything uh, it get, uh, that gets to it in this little tab here. So there's debug tab. So I can just deploy it. Let's see if that works. Now, I also check this box because it will inject this message once, so it will start automatically. Okay, here's my data. So as you can see, uh, every second, uh, it is sending all, all data available from my sensor. I have temperature, uh, acceleration, the data from the gyroscope, magnetometer, and compass. So it's all, it's all JavaScript objects. You can manipulate that very easily. Okay, so let's start doing something useful with this data. Uh, as you can see, you've, you've got a lot of functions. Uh, you can add custom JavaScript code here. So if you, if, you don't, if you don't see a block that does whatever that you want to do, you can just program this, insert some JavaScript code here, some, some cool logic. And you have some functions that are, are ready. You have switch, change, range. Uh, you have a trigger node, a delay node. So you don't need, even need to program this. But today we're going to use MQTT out to send this data to the cloud. I'm, I'm using AWS uh, IoT, uh, but any service will do. I just chose that. Uh, because it has uh, an MQTT broken and I can see all, all my data here. I just configured a thing here on AWS IoT following their documentation. I won't delve into it. Uh, and I just configured this node to connect to, to AWS IoT. So I just put my, my server, uh, AWS server address here and i just added my certificates to to connect to it so very simple configuration and i'm just able to uh, I'm, I'm going to set a topic here I, I call this test topic because i can track this later and then i just get my output from my sensor and connect to the mqtt node and i can just deploy it Okay, I'm connected. As you can see uh, on the verbose output from the from, from the Docker Compose, uh, I can see it is connected to this particular address. And now it is sending all this data also to the to the MQTT broker. So if I get here to to my AWS dashboard, okay, I have to log in again. Okay, let me quickly sign out and then sign in again. So, uh, I just access the, the dashboard again. You just go to the main dashboard and you look for uh, IoT. Okay, uh, then in monitor you have, uh, you can see the connections and the status of the messages. I just go to test, it is connecting to the gateway, and then I'll specify the topic I'm using. I called it test topic, and I just subscribe to it. Now, here's my data. It's all beautifully coming in every second. So my temperature data, accelerometer, periscope, etc. So uh, now that it's on a cloud, let me move, let me move my sensor a bit so you can see that the data is changing as I move my sensor. Okay, coming in nicely then you can use this data however you want you can do some dashboards some analytics with this data once uh, it's on the cloud 
So there, there are other things I can do here. I can write files, for example. I can just bring this file uh, block here and I can go to settings and then I, I'm going to specify a file name, for example, uh, data slash data dot log. So I can just bring this, this output here and it will also write to this file. So I'm, I'm just going to deploy. Okay, this is done. And then I'll just, I have SSH access here to my board and I can just go to the directory I shared and you can see there's data.log there. I can just uh, tap into this file and all my data is coming in there uh, reading locally too. So uh, as you can see, in a matter uh, of, of minutes, I was able to get from a clean Terizon install uh, to, to a working demo. So four wires, a module, a care board, Node-RED, Terizon, and I'm, I'm, I'm able to get something to, to the cloud working. It's very easy to, to prototype using this. So uh, now I'm going to get into the Q&A session. Okay, I have a question asking that uh, we have some low level details, but uh, they don't understand what Node-RED is. So I, I think, I, think uh, I was able to demonstrate what it does, but it is essentially a programming tool, but it's uh, visual based. So it is not based on it is based on blocks, so you connect blocks, and you. It is it is somewhat similar to uh, what you do on, on softwares like LabVIEW and things like that. Uh, so it, it can be useful uh, on the field when uh, the, the the operator who's is going to to use this is not uh, is not experienced with programming. So uh, it's very easy to to change the the actual behavior of the device by just connecting these blocks. And so uh, w uh, another question, can I export this Node-RED app to run directly on a Docker run command, for example? Yes, you can. Uh, let, me, let me just show you here. So for example, uh, I, I could use Docker run to run this. I just decided to use Compose because uh, it was easier to, to show you but you can you can use this compose file. Let me get back to that slide. You can uh, just transform this to to a Docker run line, and uh, you can save all data, everything, all your flows, everything you you did, uh, all your programming will be saved to this directory. So it will be saved, and you can even use Docker compose to make your application auto start when your module boots. So it is, it is possible to do this. Uh, okay, so another question, uh, does Terizon run on gesture hardware? Uh, yes, uh, we, we optimize Terizon just for, for our modules, but it is built with the Yocto project, so it's all open source, but we try to, to optimize uh, the, the experience for, for our modules, but it is all open source, so no closed source involved here. Okay. Another interesting question, will Docker image in, images induce boot delays or more weight to the root file system? If so, are there any comparison figures? Uh, so it will induce a certain boot delay, uh, uh, especially compared to, to a service running right after boot. So this, uh, this uh, container approach is not uh, it's not used on, on on scenarios where you need very fast boot, but I don't I don't I don't see it adding a, a lot more weight to to the root file system. It it, it definitely use some uses some more storage than uh, it would without containers, but uh, we don't see any performance penalty. So no more uh, no more CPU usage, uh, no more memory usage. It's all so comparable to, to it running outside of a container. So another question, 
uh, how complex can an, an application be? How to develop a full application of Node-RED? Uh, it, it can be as complex as you like it to be. Uh, I did a, a small example, but this can be can be huge. Uh, let me just show you. You you can you can have more than one single flow, so you can add more flows here and ha have them all running. Uh, it can be as large as you want. So uh, you can even uh, add. There there is some question regarding this too. You can even add a local dashboard if you don't want to use the cloud. You can just go in and install, for example, uh, this dashboard module. Node Red dashboard, and then it will uh, generate some new blocks, and then you can generate a local dashboard, and then you can position the buttons, uh, the gauges, the uh, text, audio. So uh, you can really do, um, you can really make your whole application here. Uh, okay, a another question: What are the advantages of container-based development over a traditional approach? Uh, I think we also have a webinar uh, regarding Terizon itself, so this is uh, this is covered more thoroughly there. But myself, I I like developing with containers because it is easier to update, it is easier to keep track of things, it is easier to 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 manage versions of of things. So and and also it is harder to break your system when you you using containers because it, it is all sandboxed. Right, and in my experience, it's it's very the, the the development flow is very it's very modern, it's very quick, and it it's straightforward once you once you get the hang of it. Okay, another question is the Node Red node for Terizon available in flows.node.red.org. Uh, I'm not using uh, anything specific to Terizon here on, on my actual flow. Uh, this. Uh, I just used uh, native functions that come with Node-RED, and then I just downloaded this sensor node that someone uh, uploaded to to Node-RED, so you can find it all there. Uh, there in, in flows.node-red.org, you will also find a lot of examples, uh, example example flows and another node, so, so you can just import them here. It is another cool thing is that uh, every flow, it can be, uh, import it or export it as JSON file. So you can just copy, for example, this flow here, I can just copy it and I can just import, paste it here. And there you go. For example, this flow, it is adding uh, the dashboard node. I don't have it installed here. That's why the red, the red uh, blocks. But for example, this is a huge flow that implements a, a file system, a, a, a file browser. So I uh, can just paste it here and run it and install the missing the missing nodes. So uh, very easy to do. So I can also export my, my own flow. So I can just copy this and back it up. Uh, okay. Another question, after I assemble the pipeline on Node-RED, is it persisted in the container even if, if I stop it? So it is because I I added this line here. Let me show you again. I added this volumes uh, parameter on my Docker Compose file. And by default, Node-RED writes its data to this directory slash data. And it's shared on my base OS in this folder, home terizon.node-red. So Everything that Node Red's uh, Node Red writes here, it's actually on this dot Node Red folder. So when I kill the container, it will when I start it back, it will read from this directory and and recover everything. Okay, my embedded device is running on a Qt display. Can I use uh, Node Red dashboard parallel to this? Yes, you can. Uh, you're just going to run it. Uh, in, in parallel, as you would do with any application, you can run it. We, we, we you can even uh, do your programming using Node-RED and then display using Qt, for example. Uh, how does this Node-RED implementation uh, know how to use your platform's I/O? That that is very interesting. Uh, here, I'm using default. Uh, you know, Linux actually. Uh, 
abstracts all of this, right? So, uh, for example, the device I'm using, it is I squared C. So uh, Linux by default, it will enumerate I squared C here at dev slash I squared C3, for example. I just mapped it to I squared C1 because in, uh, in this particular implementation, that sensor implementation, it is hard coded to, to, to pull from I squared C1. But uh, Linux takes care of abstracting abstracting everything. So you can use GPIOs, you can use I squared T, you can use SPI. Uh, it, it's all defined on the device tree. Uh, in this case, Terizon already takes care of all, all, all the things. The system already knows about your hardware. And yeah, your device tree ha has to be set correctly. Uh, for our boards, the device tree is already set. But if you want to add some custom hardware, for example, you just use device tree overlays. We also have a container with developer tools to make this easier. So you don't necessarily need to, to mess with compilation outside the system. We're, we're trying to really to, to make editing your device tree and adding new hardware very easy. So I think that is so I wanted to, to cover for today. Uh, I think I was able to show you how quick it is to, to get something running. And I hope I got you interested in this. I hope you you guys are able to, to try this. And, and I'd like you to thank you for, for coming. Thank you for joining. And you can access our, our website, see uh, what we offer, our, our modules. And we also have documentation on developer.teradex.com. It is updated daily, uh, very thorough documentation. We're improving it uh, every day. We have a very active community. You can answer your technical questions there. Uh, we, the, the engineers, we're actively answering questions over there. So we, uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, thank you for joining. Bye-bye.